Jean Elizabeth Spangler was an actress in bit parts in the 1940s, but unbeknownst to her that her notoriety would really become a thing after she would mysteriously disappear in 1949. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Jean Spangler. This month I've decided to do cases revolving around celebrities, mysterious cases, whether they're disappearances, unsolved homicides, solved homicides, suicides. I want to cover it all. There's a lot of cases that we don't talk about in particular this one, because of how controversial it is. It also includes another actor, Kirk Douglas, and her disappearance definitely is one of those things that I don't think we'll ever get closure on. The same thing with her daughter. So, Jean was born on September 2nd of 1923 in Seattle, Washington. Now, she would eventually reside in Los Angeles and would attend high school there, specifically the Franklin High School, with which she would graduate in 1941. Now, she danced at the Earl Carroll Theater and at the Florentine Gardens, which this will come up a little bit later, but she was a dancer, and this... She would work here before her career actually started in acting, um, and specifically in the film industry in 1948. Now, her career in the film industry was very small, it was very, very short, and um, she appeared as a dancer in several unaccredited roles in um, When My Baby Smiles at Me, Chicken Every Sunday, and the musical drama, which is one of the last ones she was in, which is Young Man with a Horn. Now, she married a man named Dexter Benner in 1942, so just a year fresh out of high school, and he was in manufacturing. They would have a daughter named Christine, who would be born on the 22nd of April in 1944. Now, unfortunately, this marriage wouldn't last very long. They would end up divorcing in 1946. Uh, Jean and Dexter went through a very lengthy custody hearing and battle of Christine, but Jean won in 1948, of which she was awarded full custody. Now, Jean was living with her mother, her sister-in-law, and her brother. So, um, her mother Florence was out of Los Angeles at the time of her disappearance. So Jean told Sophie, which is her sister-in-law, on the evening of October 7th of 1949 that she was meeting up with her ex-husband, which is Dexter, talking about a late child support payment. And that that was before she was going to the set. Well, after about two hours, two hours after she left, Jean calls and she tells Sophie that she's going to have to work a full eight hours that evening and that she wouldn't be home. Jean also spoke to Christine on the phone as well, which is good that she heard her mother's voice before her ultimately disappearing. Well, the last time anybody saw Jean was at a farmer's market and this was by a saleswoman there. This was several blocks from her home and it was around 6 p.m. that evening and she looked like she was waiting for somebody. And then she would just disappear without a trace. That following morning, Sophie went to the police station and she filed a missing persons report. And this was after Jean didn't come home that morning. This was very unusual for Jean. She was very on point, came home, especially after a night of work, to make sure that Christine was okay. Now, even though Jean told Sophie that she was going to work, the cops looked into this. Well, they called the Screen Actors Guild, uh, well, Screen Extras Guild, which is the extras version of the Actors Guild, and also, like, called the studio, but there was nothing that indicated that Jean was actually working that night. Now, the police even contacted Dexter to see if her meeting up with him before going to the studio was actually a thing. Well, Dexter said he hadn't seen Jean in a few weeks, and his new wife, Lynn Lasky, also corroborated this statement. So, 
After about two days, so now this brings us to October 9th of 1949, this is when her purse is found. Now her purse is in a severe state of being tattered. Like the straps on one side specifically were torn loose as if it was ripped off her arm. And it was discovered in Griffith Park. Now this is five and a half miles away from the house she was living in. But inside was something interesting. By interesting, I mean there was a letter and it stated something that's in reference to seeing a doctor and a person named Kirk. Now, the note said, can't wait any longer, going to see Dr. Scott. It will work best this way while mother is away. There is absolutely no money in the purse, which was corroborated by Sophie stating that Jean had no money that evening. So robbery was completely ruled out. Now, the only Kirk in her life would have been the one she was working with, which was Kirk Douglas. Now, she worked with him on the set of Young Man with a Horn, but even after Kirk called the police, cleared his name, the mystery still stands. What happened to Jean? Literally, what happened? Um, and the name Dr. Scott was definitely confusing because the only person with the name Scott in his name was a man that was abusive that she had... She, she had, hadn't seen since 1945. She had dated this man, and he was abusive towards her. Now, when her mother Florence returned home, she said to police that a man named Kirk had picked Jean up twice, stayed in his vehicle, and never came inside the house. Which was odd. You'd think that if you're seeing somebody, you'd want to go inside of the house. But Jean just simply met him in his vehicle. Well, well, police asked... Every doctor in Los Angeles that had the last name Scott, and they don't know a woman with the last name Spangler or Benner, or think that they've ever seen a woman with those two last names. So they would continue to search Griffith Park um, the following week, and that was with over 200 volunteers and the local law enforcement. Well, the only thing they found was a Denham, L.A. County like jail uniform that was in a shallow hole but they just brushed this off as somebody just burying their uniform that may have may or may not have escaped or just left prison with their jumper on and they also didn't find any more belongings that belonged to Jean. Now after her disappearance the public severely speculated on how Kirk Douglas was involved in this. Now like I mentioned before and how he's mentioned in the note he already told the police that he had nothing to do with this and basically stating that he denied knowing Jean. Now, at a later point in the investigation, he mentioned that he talked to her a bit on the set and he also kidded around with her. Well, he also said that he never spent time with her outside of the studio as well. So this is kind of like, where is this Kirk person? Who is this Kirk person she's talking about? So... On October 12th, Kirk gives a formal statement to the press saying that he didn't remember her name until somebody said it's the extra, the tall extra, that you worked with in Young Man with a Horn. And he knew exactly who that they were talking about. It was the tall girl with the green dress. He said that he talked to her on set, but he never saw her before or after being on set and never went out with her. Interesting, right? Well, well. Now... Let's get into some juicy stuff about this case. So, if you haven't heard about this case before, there is some talk about Jean being pregnant. Well, some of her girlfriends at the time said that she was three months pregnant, and that at the time that she vanished, she spoke about getting an abortion, which was illegal at the time. Major no-no. Well, some people that frequented the same nightclubs and bars that she did said that a former med student that went by the name of Doc would perform abortions as long as they would pay. Now, this is who they think that she saw for an illegal abortion. Now, they investigated this theory that possibly she was a victim of a botched abortion and that she had su basically suffered her own demise. But this led nowhere because they can't find this doctor. They don't know who this doctor is. Whether she had an illegal abortion, we don't know because there's no body at all. Well, she also was known to have had a casual affair with a fellow actor named Robert Cummings. And this happened around the time that she disappeared. Now, Robert said that she didn't mention 
who the man was, but she said that she was having the time of her life. And this was when Robert asked if it was serious. So clearly it wasn't serious and they were just having fun. Now also at this time, they feared that she could have been another possible victim of a series of killings in LA at the time that could have been potentially linked to the death of the Black Dahlia in 1947. That was another theory quickly thrown out. Now, another possible theory is that her disappearance has something to do with how she's possibly affiliated to gangsters in the area. Now, a historian by the name of John Lewis claims that because of her acquaintances, Mark Hansen and Nils Thor Granlund, who ran at the Florentine and um, the other establishment, the gardens of where, where she used to dance, because of this, she knew some of the people in the mob and this basically put her in like the throes of mob affiliations and it include included ties to Davy Ogle which we'll get to him in a second who is an associate to Anthony Canero and Mickey Cohen. Mickey Cohen is another person that I wanted to cover during this month so stay tuned. Um, allegedly she was seen with Davy Ogle in Palm Springs and in Vegas. Now, about two days after Jean disappeared is when Davy Ogle disappears. So, October 9th of 1949. This leads police to think that they ran away together. This is because of Davy Ogle's indictment of conspiracy and they think that he fled to avoid being prosecuted. Now, on Jean's behalf, her sister Betsy ends up testifying, it basically in a court of law, when it comes to this whole case. And she states, now this happened in April 1950, she states that she was never acquainted with Ogle or Cohen or anyone that had any ties to, the, to him or to the mob whatsoever. So that right there is kind of like a what is going on and why did they both disappear? Now there was some sightings that they saw a woman matching her description with a man matching his description out of motel but there was no names at the motel in the sign-in book because at the time you still had to sign in. So now soon after Jean disappeared custody of Christine was up in the air and it was awarded temporarily to her father on October 27th of 1949. Well, the following year, there's another custody battle when it comes to Christine, and that is between Jean's mother, Florence, and Dexter. Now, Dexter defied a court order stating that Florence can see her granddaughter, Christine. And because of this, he was ordered to serve a sentence of 15 days in the county jail. But he ended up fleeing and going to Florida. Now, this charge was in contempt of court, basically. Yeah, so Jean, Jean's ex-husband, Dexter, basically evaded everybody by going to Florida. And this leaves Florence and Sophie and everybody else in their family like, what happened? Because there's no answers, and there's still no answers to this day. So as of today, Jean is still listed as a missing person. The LAPD has not closed the case, and they do not have plans to close this case because... They don't, they don't know. They just don't know. It is a cold case. Um, and like I said about the motel, there's a lot of possible sightings over the years, but nothing has panned out or has been validated that those sightings were in fact Jean. So that, my friends, is the odd disappearance of Jean Spangler. I hope you guys enjoyed today's true crime case. I know it was a little bit of uh, a different because... I really like disappearance cases because it's not, there's no definitive end. And I know that sounds really strange, but hopefully, hopefully one day we will figure out what happened to Gene Spangler. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, turn, uh, hit subscribe, turn your bell phone notification on all, and leave a comment down below of what celebrity death or disappearance, suicide, unsolved unsolved death you want me to cover and I will see you guys tomorrow in a brand new video.